Hi and welcome back to Cut the Craggle. Today we have another Throwback Thursday review with this 2011 set, the LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean Aqua de Vida. I recently reviewed another of these sets, the Isla de Murta. If you haven't seen that video yet, be sure to check it out. I'll pop a card up in the top right corner. This set I did pick up used because it was going for redonkulous money sealed. But the listing on eBay did say it was 100% complete and in good condition. Let's take a look inside. So here it is all built up. There are two main assemblies to this set. You have this little earth mound on the left with the actual fountain of youth. And then on the right is this archway with what is supposed to be a waterfall masking it like a curtain. We'll take a closer look at each part starting with the fountain. So this is the build that gives the set its name, the fabled Aqua de Vida, or Fountain of Youth. It's a pretty simple build really, just a stack of bricks on some plate pieces to create this earth mound. You have a couple of flame pieces, either side in trans blue, and there's this small tower of trans blue round bricks at the peak, with half a boulder piece in dark green. That's meant to represent the Fountain of Youth with the water shooting up like a geyser I guess. For decoration you get a standard Lego skeleton lying down on the job and these two goblet pieces in pearl gold to represent the chalices that are required for the profane ritual in the movie. They're described as being silver in the movie but to be honest that's not really a big deal for me. And then we have this really nice printed round tile down here. This is supposed to be the map that Jack stole at the end of World's End. But what's confusing is that Whilst it's included here, the setting of On Stranger Tides Climax, it's actually destroyed fairly early on into the movie. I'm not really complaining as such because it's a lovely piece, but it's just one of a number of inaccuracies in this set. This printed disc piece is really nice, and that design does a great job in illustrating the idea of water spraying out the top. But apart from looking nice, this doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't spin round. There's just no built-in play features at all here. I mean, even though this is a nice enough looking build, it doesn't even resemble the actual Fountain of Youth from the movie. The second part of the set is this archway with the waterfall at the back. It's another good looking assembly to be fair. It uses a coordinated, consistent palette of colours, and it has an almost Atlantean feel to it that I really like particularly with these broken pillars either side, especially with the pieces on the top here. I've never even seen these before, at least not that I can remember. They give a nice flourish to the tops of the pillars. Around the back, the set isn't quite as presentable as the front. I mean, it's not dreadful looking, but it's pretty obvious this isn't meant to be the customer facing end. These two hooks stick out a bit like a sore thumb in black, and then you have one of these plastic sheet pieces for the water, which I'm not particularly fond of. It's a pretty little assembly, but the thing is, there is no waterfall like this in the movie. This is poised as the entrance to the Fountain of Youth in this set, but in the film, they actually enter the cavern by travelling through an upside down pool of water. This set comes with three minifigures, four if you count the plain Lego skeleton. First up, we have Captain Jack Sparrow. This is pretty much the same minifigure from the Isla de Murta set. The only real difference being that this has a different headpiece with two different face prints. This one where Jack is looking a little scared, and if we turn him round, take off the hairpiece, he also has a much more confident looking expression. He almost looks a bit like Tony Stark there. This is still a great looking minifigure produced to a very high standard. One minor error though is that Jack still has the piece of eight here on his scarf. When that was destroyed as part of the ritual to release Calypso in At World's End. Next up we have Hector Barbosa. This is a different minifigure to the one from the Isla de Murta set. Since the last time we saw him, Barbosa's become a privateer in the British Navy after losing his ship to Blackbeard and being forced to cough his own leg. This is another good looking minifigure. Although really, the only exclusive pieces here are his torso and hat. Those legs with the one wooden leg are fairly common, and that face print is the same as the Barbosa we got in the Isla de Murta set. I'm fine with that. 
finally we have the minifig that might have been the biggest reason for people buying this set when it was released. The Pirate or Pirate Sphere, Captain Blackbeard. This is such an epic minifigure. He has this really elaborate beard piece that also has these lit fuses or slow matches that Blackbeard was said to have under his hat and tied into his beard. He also has this amazing piece for the Sword of Triton. In the films, this sword gave Blackbeard unearthly power and he was able to control the ropes and rigging of his ship to attack people. This piece looks absolutely breathtaking and they've never used this for anything else. I think this hat piece was a new mold introduced in this theme. I know they used the same mold in a different colour with different printing for Davy Jones, but I don't think I've seen it used elsewhere since. Just gonna take his hat and beard piece off so you can get a clearer look at the prints underneath. You know, that face print is pretty fierce on its own like that. The flesh around the collar there is a little pale, but it's okay. Still nowhere near the terrible issues with opacity we seem to get nowadays. Yeah, all in all, another superb minifigure. Overall, this is a decent set, but I don't feel this is as good as the Eisler de Murta set. Both cost $19.99 back in the day, both released in 2011, and both came with three minifigs and a minifig skeleton, so I think it's a fair comparison. That one came with a couple of built-in play features, but here we just have two static builds. They are pretty, and I love the colour palette used, but this set is also very inaccurate. As I've mentioned, the Fountain of Youth looks completely different in the movie, and there's no waterfall entrance like what we get here. Add to that the inclusion of the round map that was destroyed in the film way before this scene, and I think this might be a case of LEGO having to design the set before the final details had been confirmed. All these sets hit shelves to coincide with the release of the fourth movie, so it makes sense that this set, based on a film that probably wasn't finished yet when they were developing it, is less accurate compared to a set based on a film that had already been out for quite a few years by this point. The minifigures are by far the biggest draw here. This version of Jack isn't exclusive, but the Barbosa figure is, and this would have also been a much cheaper way of getting that superb Blackbeard if you couldn't afford the big Queen Anne's Revenge set. What do you think of the LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean Aqua De Vida set? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, and if you haven't already, be a hero and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Laters.